I've found that um, there are simple ways that help me learn a lesson or help me absorb um, scripture or, or any form of learning uh, is to either have something to play with, um, have something that, will, that I can take home as a reminder even, something that I can be involved in. So I'm going to ask is Pastor Johnson here. Oh, there he is. He's hiding back there. I'll ask the pastors to uh, distribute a little fun thing to go with this message. So we all learn differently, uh, maybe uh, touching, seeing, hearing. Uh, so I was going to just have some uh, Play-Doh or some clay up here that I could mold. <laughs> Jen's so excited. Uh, make sure the kids, I, if, they're, if we don't have enough, I will buy more and it'll come, I'll have enough for you. Um, I, ho I hope that I purchased enough, um, but hopefully this will be a way to engage. Um, I, I do have, uh, I, I think I'm going to start a challenge because some of the people at the nine o'clock were giving me what they molded and Peggy Stewart presented me with this horse head that is f fantastic. <laughs> So try to beat that. Uh, and I, and I, and I, uh, I know that even engaging and listening will, uh, will help a message. Thank you, pastors, for giving that out. Let's go to our God in prayer. Glorious God, we thank you for the, way, for the uh, ways, for your word and the ways in which you help us remind us that we are yours and you are always working in our lives you work in and through us for your glory, God. Make us be open to being molded by you and to deepen our relationship with you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Let me give you a little bit of background. And um, uh, it, it, just a short background, a little history lesson. So you have something in your hands to play with so you don't fall asleep during the history lesson. So this is from uh, Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet, and a uh, prophet around 600 B.C. to about 587 B.C. Um, God called Jeremiah because um, he wanted, God wanted Jeremiah to speak the truth to Israel who had turned its back on God. Israel had turned away from God, started uh, worshiping Baal, the, um, the statues, the bronze statues, instead of the covenant, they turned away from the covenant that, God, that they had with God. Uh, so Jeremiah is a little bit nervous because he's saying, I, I, I need uh, the words, I'm too young, are you sure it's me? And God said, I will put my word in your mouth. I will speak those words to you so that you can warn Israel that I am taking back the blessing that I have given them because they turned away from me, because they turned away. So guess how Israel took the news of Jeremiah saying, you all are sinners and you all are, uh, need to turn away from your ways and come back to God. How popular do you think he was? Yeah, not so much. So he's getting attacked. He's getting targeted because he's speaking the truth. And the Lord is speaking uh, to uh, Jeremiah the connection between the potter as he tells him to go down to the potter's house and to uh, see how the potter is molding, how, uh, how God works the way the, the, uh, the potter does, making and molding. Um, someone from the uh, 9 a.m., as, as they were leaving, they said, do you know why the potter molds um, is constantly molding before he makes what he needs to, to make? And I said, I don't really know. I didn't research that for the sermon. And he said, because he's trying to squeeze the air out of before it sets. And I'm like, so God is trying to squeeze the air out of us? Nah, I hope not. No, he wants us to be who he wants us to be. And normally... When I speak, I speak um, in a message where I want you to take what you've learned and take it out into the greater world to have an impact on the greater world. But today, my focus, I really want to be on uh, developing our relationship with our Lord and Savior, developing that, that personal relationship, allowing ourselves, I see that clay being worked, allowing ourselves to be used by our 
by our creator, just like that beautiful song, melt me, melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, allow the Holy Spirit into our lives so that we can be who God wants us to be so that we can have that deeper relationship. And we are constantly being molded just like in your hands. Mine's in my pocket. I had a hard time opening the, uh, the thing, but yeah, it's a little bit, but if you work it or have a helper, the kids will probably be good at it. But um, as we are constantly moving it around in our hands and it's getting warmer, we can make uh, what we want. I'm terrible, so I just made a cigar, I think, this morning. There's my cigar. But we're constantly being molded for God's glory. He's never done with us. And that is what I, what I find so joyful about this message, is that he's never done with us. He constantly is calling us back. He's constantly calling us back to be in right relationship with him. And we are never lost. He wants us to turn away. And I, I speak of um, using the word. He wants to us to turn away from evil. And evil sounds like a, uh, a very strong word. But when we're not in God's, um, in God's will, when we're not following on his path, it's the opposite of, be of, of good. And how do we stay on that path? How do we stay in the will of God? By being in relationship with one another as well, by, by being in relationship, by being connected to others so that we can support each other. How do we do that? We can join the small groups. We can join the uh, small group studies that we learn and we get that deeper relationship, bouncing off one another and, and uh, supporting one another, learning deeper about who God wants us to be and how he is molding us and, and uh, as we are pliable, as he is making us into what he wants us to, to be. I'm a prime example, and I probably talked um, uh, ad nauseum about this, but where I came from to where I am now is only by the grace of God. It's only by God molding me and me allowing it as well. Me being open to what God has for my life. I am not the same person, and I don't want to be the same person as I was. And a few years from now, I don't want to be the same person I am now. But to keep growing and to keep being molded by our God so that I am in right relationship with him. And the joy that brings me, the joy that relationship brings, to be in relationship, to allow our God to be who he wants us to be. Because he only has good things for us. It's only glorifying when he is working in our, in our lives. So when we are called out to turn away, as, as Jeremiah called out Israel to turn away and to seek God and to allow yourselves to constantly be reworked in, and, and transformed, God does not want us to be the same. God doesn't want us to be the same today, the same a year from now as we are now. He wants us in deeper relationship. He wants to continue that transformation, and that transformation happens as we are in relationship with one another. I see all the smiles. You guys must be making these wonderful little, I can't wait to see it. You guys are having fun with this. I love it. I, 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 the kids, uh, a, a child walked out this morning and, and said, this was the most fun sermon, and this is the greatest. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad to bring smiles and, and have, have it go a little deeper. But God wants us to be uh, more than what we are now. He's constantly changing like the potter is constantly, maybe not, maybe the, uh, when he's going into, I should say she too, maybe when she is uh, making a bowl and it's not quite the, the bowl that uh, the potter wants it to be. It's constantly working through it. How many do pottery? Anybody? Oh, Wow. A couple of you do it. I'd be interested. Maybe Cindy will set up a, uh, a, a ceramics class for us. But the glory that God has to, be, to want to be in that relationship, to do whatever it takes, and how uh, God is saying, I am taking away all the blessings that I had poured out on you, Israel. And I don't want God's blessings to be taken away from me. I don't want to miss out on those blessings. 
Thus says the Lord, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you because they were worshiping. They were outside of God's will because they were not worshiping God, that they had a covenant to worship, that they had a covenant with God. Turn now all of you from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. And God is with us through that. Turn away and be focused on our relationship, diving deeper into who he wants us to be. And the wonderful part, um, I love that this is coming on, um, on Communion Sunday. Because as we go into a time of communion, I want you to really think about what we're doing in this time. That we are coming to the table. That we are reminded of our sinful nature. That we are reminded... That we have, as, as our sin nature, we do fall away from God, but there is forgiveness because of Jesus Christ. There is transformation constantly going on because of the work of our Lord, because he wants that relationship with us. There's nothing else he wants more than that. So as we come to the table, we are reminded this is the body of Christ. This is the blood of Christ. And we confess our sins. We confess uh, silently and we do a prayer of confession. And I believe in that moment we are asking God to remold us, to rework us, to transform us. And we don't do it by ourselves. We don't. He provides the, us for that transformation. He provides us to be in relationship in those small groups that we get together when we, when, we choose a, uh, when we choose a group to get involved with, many of those relationships have, co have continued because it's not just good morning on a Sunday morning, but it's, hey, I got to know people a little deeper than I did before. And I'm feeling a change inside me because of this relationship that God has put into my life. So I encourage you to take part in that kind of transformation in these small groups as well. Leaning on one another. And if you have any doubts, maybe you're coming, um, maybe you're coming every Sunday, but you're having doubts because of things going on in your life. And you leave and you still feel the same. You leave and you, and you still have your doubts about who is God? Why would God want to be in a relationship with me? Why would God want to be in a relationship with little old Joanne? But he does, each and every one of us. So if you have any doubts about God molding you and wanting to transform you and wanting to go deeper with you and, and for his glory, us pastors are, is that right? We or us? Our pastors are available to speak to, leaning on each other, for that fellowship, leaning on each other to speak to, to share with. Maybe other people are going through the same things you're going through. But God provides us here. He is molding us constantly for that glory to transform us. And I will repeat that over and over, that transformation, because we are never left the same. Are you the same person that you were five, ten years ago? It's true. You are, you are reacting in a way that I think a lot of other people feel. For God help me, I don't want to be the same person I was. And God did help me. And that transformation. So when we leave from here, please take this fun Play-Doh as a reminder of that transformation. As a physical reminder that, that he is constantly working through us. Just like you're making things right now and you're going, nope, I don't want that. I want to make it into this. But allow this to be a fun, interactive way to remember that God never gives up on us. And he wants us in that right relationship for his glory. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this message this morning. We give you thanks that we get to come to the table this morning as well. We give you thanks that you never give up on us and that everything you have for us is for your glory and for your goodness and for our own good. Thank you that we are not the same as we used to be. Almighty God, continue your work in us. Let us be open to being molded. 
Let our hearts be open. You have our hearts. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen.